I'm using uh, acrylic modeling paste to fill the pin holes. Works really well and it's pretty easy. You uh, I've got some of it in a cup here so I'm not drying out the whole tub. And uh, basically all you do is brush it on and uh, kind of scrub it or stab it to uh, get it in the holes. So just use an old brush or you know one that's worn out or and you can let that dry for a little bit if you want. This stuff dries really quickly though so um, and you'll have to get your your brush wet because it's going to get dry and gunk it up. And basically just with a dry uh, cloth, or I'm using a, a paper towel here, just wipe it off the surface, leaving it uh, in the holes. And this will fill in in detail, of course, and you can see All the little, um, the little um, just details sculpted in there that I you know highlighting in, and uh, see the white now. I, I debated on adding some paint to this because you can tint it just with any acrylic paint, um, but I left it white, so. Um, Easy to see, make sure that it's in the holes. Um, I've already done quite a bit on the back here. And you can see uh, the white compared to the, the gray. There's quite a bit left on the surface, but. So I'm just working my way to the front here and somewhat time consuming, but I'd rather do this than count on the paint just filling it in or uh, using filler primer, which would really flood the, the detail and I didn't want to do that. I was using a um, a uh, damp cloth before, but it it seemed to be taking too much out, and then I was having to go back and, and try it again. Sure, if you can see here, these pinholes are just super tiny. Like I said, I've regretted assuming, y'all, you, know, you just won't see that, and the, the pain will fix it, or. No, and it's never skip on prep work. And um, just take the time to do it, and uh, it'll look better in the end.
Some things about modeling paste I forgot to mention or I should mention. Um, it's It works better if uh, you prime the parts first. Um, if you try to brush it on resin it tends to just kind of slide off or it doesn't stick as well. So as a result if you were ever to, to strip this or you had to start over it would pull all the, mo the modeling paste off as well so um, just something to be aware of. I, I have some old kits that I would love to strip and start over but I know um, I used to use this stuff a lot but um, you can't really sculpt with it it uh, doesn't hold detail it's mostly for filling it works really good for um, pinholes like this and for um, you know, hairline mold lines that you just can't get rid of. Um, I'll just kind of brush a little bit of this along there and you can sand it. I'll you know, sand it down a little bit and uh, it works works really well but not as as sturdy as, as uh, epoxy sculpt or, or something like that but you would go crazy filling all of these uh, pinholes with super glue or you know, or using a sculpting tool. You, you can use a sculpting tool to apply this stuff. You know, this is paste. And in this case, I'm using it basically like a, a thick glaze. Okay, I've got, uh, as you can see here, most of the surface um, covered with modeling paste. I think I've got most of the pinholes taken care of. Let's see if we can get this to focus here. I haven't checked any of this video yet, so kind of wondering if any of the pinholes I'm talking about will even be visible, but get the idea anyway. Yeah, this is probably okay to um, just hit with the primer, but I'm going to go ahead and sand it down because the modeling paste. You know, as I brushed it on, it might, might not be as smooth as I want it, so I figured I went to all that work, I'm going to go ahead and sand it down as well. Um, on the arms here, I was being lazy and I didn't, I didn't putty up the, uh, um, the inside of the arms thinking, well, you won't see those because they're going to be behind her back, but you can still see all this here so I went ahead and puttied that up as well. The casting on the head was nice. There was a little bit of a pinhole in her ear that I filled with modeling paste but this stuff will shrink so I'm gonna use a little epoxy sculpt in there and, and fill that but I think you can barely see the there's still a little bit of a seam line there on her neck. And uh, I'll sand that down as well. The creature head had a little blemish on his chin. I'll slide the the base over here. I think previously I called it an alligator and before I get a lot of angry emails, it is a crocodile. I think this is gonna need some more attention here. I'm, I'm probably gonna have to use some epoxy sculpt there and actually uh, sculpt in the, the scale textures, but uh, the top of the head looks Okay, a little crunchy, but so is the rest of it, so let's check the inside of the mouth where I had to do some, some putty work back there. I guess you can't see anything in there because of the shadow, but um, looks okay from from here. Okay, I'm gonna go sand this surface down and, um, and we'll wash all the parts again.
give them another coat of primer and see if we're ready to paint. Okay, I think we're in good shape here. Looks like I took care of the pinholes and uh, still see the, the detail in there. Didn't, didn't lose anything by applying it too thick. Time consuming, but a minor problem. And uh, just a good excuse to showcase modeling paste and how you can use that. Um, everybody's got their own method and what works for them. Okay, I'm decided I'm going to start by painting the base. Uh, a lot of times, by the time you're finished with the figure, um, the base gets rushed because you're just anxious to be completed and put it on the shelf or start on your next project. So, um, the the base on this is it's a uh, it's a kit in itself and and deserves as much attention as the the figure. Okay. So I'm gonna mix up some paint and I'm gonna start airbrushing the inside of the mouth and then I can bring that down into the lighter color. It's gonna be along here and in the belly. And uh, we can go from there.